If you're an Orion GIF creator and you want to learn how to make a profile picture for your account or a thumbnail for one of your videos, here's how you can do that using Blender. I am recording this assuming you know at least the very basics of Blender and you already have Blender installed. If you don't, you can go watch another video on the basics or how to install Blender and then come back to this video and learn how to use the add-on. But I'm going to go fully through on how to install the add-on, how to use every feature on the add-on to customize your drifter, and how to make a decent looking render for something like a profile picture. So first of all, to download the add-on, you need to join my discord and download it from there you can find the link in the description of the video just click the link and go ahead and join the discord server okay so once you are in the discord look for the channel called plugin under orion drift assets and in this channel there is a link to download the add-on now when you are watching this video this message might look different but just look for the part that says download and click on this link it'll open up your browser and you just need to choose where you want to save the file for now i'm just going to choose my desktop but save it wherever you know you can find it now once you have the folder called drifter customizer make sure you leave this folder as a dot zip don't right click it and click extract just leave the folder how you downloaded it now go ahead and open up blender click general to start a new project in the top left click edit preferences and over here on the left click add-ons now if you don't have the add-on already installed you would just go ahead and install it but if you are updating the plugin to the latest version and you have the old version installed make sure you uninstall that version just click the uninstall button right here click ok and then once you've uninstalled it restart your blender so fully close blender then reopen blender if you had the old version and don't restart blender the new version will not install correctly so make sure you do that but now just go back into edit preferences into add-ons click this little arrow in the top right and click install from disk now where we saved the folder earlier whether it's in your downloads documents or on your desktop find the drifter customizer.zip click it and click install from disk it should install without an issue i know a lot of people on a mac or an apple device have an issue where the folder automatically unzips itself you need to disable that in your browser i'm not sure how but you can look up a tutorial on how to do that but if you did it correctly you should have the drifter customizer if the box is unchecked, go ahead and check it, and then you can close out this window. Now, to actually access the plugin, in your 3D viewport, just click N on your keyboard to bring out the sidebar here, and click on Drifter Customizer. Now, the UI or the actual panel you're seeing is pretty easy to use, but I'm going to go over every feature and still show how to use them. First of all, you have the Add Rig to Project button, which does exactly what it sounds like. It just adds the Orion Drifter Rig into your current project. Now, you do have a Cosmetics button, but I'm not going to show that yet. I'll go over that later. Here, you have the Rig Switch feature. This this allows you to customize more than one rig in a single project. You can go up to four rigs, but you'll notice if you select second, third, or fourth, it says rig not found. That is because you don't have a second rig in your project. So say you had moved this one already and gave him a pose and set him up where you want it. You can click add rig again, then you can click second rig to customize him. But for now, I'm just going to use one rig. So I'm going to go back to first rig. And then we have the color palettes. If you click this button, it opens up a new window with all of the in-game color presets. Now, if you don't find the one you want on the first page there are three pages right now and if you're going through all the pages and you can't find them you can just search the color you want so if i want the skello trace color i can just search it and then you can click this button to apply it to the rig once you choose your color if you want to set a custom color that say isn't in the game you can change the robot color pattern color and the emission color here just click it and use the hue wheel to change it the emission controls the eyes and the emission on the model so changing this will change the color of that the pattern color will change this part of the model and if you have a pattern pattern on there, it will change the pattern. Emission strength controls the emission brightness and the eye brightness. Emission in Blender is kind of brightness, but you can use emission to make things glow. So by default, it's set on one. But if you want to use that to make the eyes or the emission glow, I'll show you how to do that later. Then you have the choose pattern and choose optics. If you want to set a pattern or change the optics on the rig, click choose pattern. So if you open this up and it looks like this, come into the top right here and click this little button that looks like four squares. This will just let you see the pattern so you don't have to go by name but if you can't find the one you're looking for you can just search it up if you're looking for an emissive pattern just go into the emissive folder and select the emissive pattern now we're getting somewhere with the model, but you can also change the eyes, the badge, and the number. So the same thing with the pattern, just click choose optics. And instead of scrolling through all this, just search up the optics you want. For example, I'm going to use the plus optics, click it and click load custom eye texture down here. And then once again, the same thing with the badge, just choose whatever badge you want. I'm just going to choose the badge I wear. And if you don't want a badge, you can disable it or re-enable it if you want it back. The number controls are pretty easy to use. Just slide this number right here to change the tens and slide this 
want to change the ones. So say I want the number 18, I would set tens to one and the ones to eight. Now shoulder pad toggle just disables the shoulder pads or re-enables them. So if you're using a shoulder pad cosmetic, you can't disable these. And going back to cosmetics, if you want to add cosmetics to the rig, click the cosmetics button up here. Once again, if you get in here and it looks like this, you can click this button in the top right, and then you can actually see the previews of the cosmetic. You can just scroll through and find the cosmetics you want, or of course, again, you can search them. So select the cosmetics you want to wear and click append right here. All the cosmetics will automatically align to where they are in game. I'm going to go ahead and disable my shoulder pad since I'm using custom ones. Now we can move on to how to pose him, how to change the cosmetics and how to render out an image of the model. So if you do want to use a name tag, you can change the name tag by clicking it and clicking tab on your keyboard. Going over here, click backspace to delete all this and then just type in your name. For this, I'm just going to delete the name tag since I don't ever really use it. And now we want to change the way he is posed. So you can click on the rig. Make sure you're not clicking the model, but the actual rig, which is all the shapes around him. Go up to object mode and change it to pose mode. And now there are multiple bones you can select and pose. There are bones that you can't move like the shoulder bones right here and these forearm bones. The bones you can move are the head bone, the torso. You can move the hands, the handballs, and the fingers. And you'll notice when we move this, the cosmetics don't move as well. And that's what these non-movable bones are for. So to make a cosmetic move with the rig, select, let's say the hat cosmetic, hold shift on your keyboard and select the rig again, go back into pose mode, select the head bone, which is what we want the hat to move with. Click control P on your keyboard and select bone right here. You'll notice if we move the bone, the hat moves as well. Then just do this for each cosmetic. So this shoulder pad would be parented to this shoulder bone right here. So once again, click control P, select bone, then do the exact same for the other shoulder pad. Make sure you have the right shoulder bone selected. Control P, bone. If you have forearm cosmetics, you parent them to this bone right here. And of course, if you have a back cosmetic, parent it to the big square bone, which is the torso. But everything should move with it now. If you don't know how to move anything or rotate anything, you can use these tools right here. Personally, I don't use these. Instead, on your keyboard, if you have a bone selected and you want to move it, click G and then you can move your cursor around to move it. If you want to rotate the hand or say rotate a finger, you can click R. And if you for some reason wanted to scale the hand, you can click S and move your cursor. It's definitely a lot easier than the tools over here. So I would recommend using the shortcuts, but if you really want to, you can use the arrows, the rotate or the scale tool. A couple more bones you have is the lower torso bone, which allows you to move this part and you can move what I guess you would call the hips of the model. If you want to move the eyes around, you can click this bone, click G and move it around to move the position of the eyes. Now, if you want to make them blink or just be in a blinked position, go back into object mode, select this little circle right here, click G and you can move it up and down to make your character blink. But before we pose the character, I want to make my cosmetics the same color as my model. So if you again want to change your color, go ahead into the color palettes and choose the color you want, click OK. And now if you want to add these colors to the cosmetics, select the cosmetic and click this button right here. You'll see primary color, secondary color and emission color. The easiest way to add your rigs color to the cosmetics is just to come over to the plugin, click the robot color and drag it over to primary color. You can do that with pattern color to secondary color and emission color to emission color. If you change one shoulder, it'll change the other, but you do have to change the hat individually. So just do the same thing. Click and drag over to secondary color, click and drag to emission color. Now your cosmetics will match the color of your rig. And now you are fully done customizing him. But if you're using Blender for your first time, I'm assuming you don't have a camera in your scene and you don't know how to add lighting. So if you want to add a camera, click shift and A on your keyboard, go down to here and click camera. You can view your camera with this button here. And if you want to move around, there's a lot of ways to move around in Blender. You can just manually move it with G, rotate it around with R. But the way I usually do it is just go into your camera view, click shift and the tilde key. Then that brings you into free cam mode and you can use W, A, S, and D, Q, and E to move around. Go ahead and place that camera where you want it, then click to lock the position. When you first add a camera, it'll probably be in landscape mode. But if you want to change that, come over here to the output properties, drop down format if it's not dropped down already, and you can change your X and Y resolution. Right now I have it on 1080 by 1920, which is portrait mode. If you want landscape mode, you can do 1920 by 1080. Or if you want a square, you can do 1024 by 1024. Usually with a square ratio, I do 2048 by 2048, so it's a bit higher quality, but do whatever you want to do. And of course, if you want reposition your camera, wherever you want it. I'll just keep mine there for now. And then it's finally time to pose your rig. Click the rig, object mode to pose mode, select the bone you want to move and move it. I'm not going to go too crazy with the pose and I'm probably just going to keep it like this and just adjust my camera angle a little bit. Now that you have your rig posed, you have your camera set up and he is fully customized.
otherwise, you need to add some light to your scene. Now, right now we are in material preview mode, which means you're not seeing what it looks like in the final render. Up in the top right, you have these four circles here, wireframe, solid mode, material mode, and this one being the render preview. Now, obviously only the orange parts are showing, which is the emission. And since that is kind of light itself, the rest of the model is dark or almost pitch black. Go back to material preview. Like I said earlier, I use this one to keep in rendered preview so I can see what it looks like while I'm moving around. You don't need to go too complex with your lighting to add a lamp or a light in Blender. Click shift A, go to light. I usually go with area light. You can see this line going downwards. That means that is the direction the light is pointing. Now to rotate a little faster and not so randomly, you can click R. After you click R, you can click Y. That'll allow you to rotate it just on the Y axis. Then you can just type in nine zero or 90 to rotate it on a 90 degree angle. Click enter once you're done. Then you can do the same when moving something. So you can click G then X and move over to the right. Now, obviously this looks pretty bad, but you can adjust the scale of your light by clicking S then say Y to scale it just on a certain axis. And I usually scale my light just to fit my model a little better. Now, obviously this light is pretty dim. It's not very bright. So what you can do is select your light, click this little light bulb right here, and you can change the power or the wattage of your light. So click on the value. You can change 10 to something like 50, then click enter and your light will be a lot brighter. And obviously this light is only hitting this side, meaning this side of the rig is still dark. Now, instead of adding a whole new light and redoing all that, you can click your light, click shift D on your keyboard and that duplicates the light. I'm going to move it over here. And just like I said earlier, click R on your keyboard, Z to rotate it on the Z axis, then type 180 to make it turn fully around. And now you have a light on both sides of your rig. I would recommend just adjusting your light, like moving it, rotating it, scaling it, adjusting the power just to get the look you want to get. I'm going to go ahead and leave my lights like this, and I'm actually going to duplicate one more light and I'm going to put it behind the model R Z and rotate it to the back of the rig. I'm going to increase this one to 80 Watts and just move it a little closer to give it kind of a glow or a backlight. And now you have just a decent lighting setup. Now, since my blender looks different from yours, you might be seeing just this black void. Now, if you want to change this to just say a solid color, you can of course come to world properties and set your color to something like red and up the value. But if you do this, red light will be reflected off your entire rig. And if you want a plain color, go ahead and click shift a mesh and plane. I'm going to rotate it on the X axis 90 degrees and move it back. So it's not clipping through the model, position it to where it's in the full camera view, select the plane and go to material properties and click the new button right here. Now you can change base color to change the color of the plane. It might look a little weird when you set a color and that's because your light is also hitting the plane. So you can turn down IOR all the way. If you want something else besides a normal plane, say the Orion drift skybox, go back to my discord server and go to the channel called skybox in here just like the add-on you'll see a download link go ahead and click that download link save it wherever you want go back in the blender and go over to your world properties here where it says color you can click this yellow dot it's going to show you a lot of stuff from the actual drifter material so just ignore all this and scroll all the way up to the top click on environment texture ignore the fact that it's pink that's just because there is no image set yet click on the open button here and then go to wherever you saved that download it'll just be called orion halloween skybox.hdr click it and then click open image. Now you can see on the left here that my background is the Orion Drift Skybox. Over here, you cannot see it because I'm in material preview. If you want to always see it in material preview, you can click this little drop arrow right here and click scene world. It'll make your rig look a little dark because there's no light, but you'll be able to see the skybox. I do like how the skybox is positioned right now, but if you want, say, a different part of the skybox shown, open up a shader window by going to the editor type and choosing shader editor. If you don't have a little window like this, you can move your cursor to the bottom left of a screen or the bottom right, it doesn't matter, and you'll see your cursor turn into a plus. Click and drag upward and change this window to a shader editor. And go ahead and change object to world. I recommend setting the texture from linear to closest. This will just make the skybox texture not so blurry. And now if you want to change the position of the skybox, click shift A, search and add a mapping node. Click shift A again and search up texture coordinate. Choose this one right here. Plug in generated to vector and vector into vector. For this, all we have to do is change the Z rotation. So the more we slide this to the right, the more the skybox will rotate. Now say this is the position you want it at, but the blue circle or the sunlight, you want it to move down into the camera. Instead of changing the Z rotation, you can change the X rotation. This looks fine to me, but you can go ahead and mess with these settings if you want and get it to the position you want it to be. Again, you can go into material preview, click this arrow and click scene world. Then you can change the mapping node values without it being so laggy. 
I mentioned earlier that you can make the eyes and the emission part of the rig glow. To do this, you need to use the compositing tab right here. Up here, you might have a lot more tabs. Just find compositing, click it, and in the top left here, click on use nodes. Some nodes like this should appear. It might look more something like this. And then what I usually do is go into the top right here, slide in a new window, change it to image editor, click this and search up render result. And right here, you'll be able to see the rendered image. Now, obviously we haven't rendered the image yet. So I'm going to go back to layout, make sure you're not on any render mode view. It'll make your render a bit slower. I'm just going to put both of these in solid mode. Now for your render settings, there are different types of render modes. Go over to render right here. I'd recommend to use cycles. The lighting and reflections and cycles will look a lot better, but it will be a bit harder to run and take a bit more time to render down here by sampling. If render isn't dropped down, click the arrow by default. This will probably be at 4096. I personally use 1024 just to get as much quality as I can, but something lower like 512 is just fine. By default, the noise will be unchecked. Go ahead and check that box. If noise threshold is unchecked, you can check it. And I usually set mine to 0 0.1. After doing that, all you have to do is click F12 on your keyboard. But if you don't have any function keys, you can go to the top left and click render and click render image. A window like this will pop up. Just go ahead and zoom out. Yes, it looks really noisy, but that is totally normal. You need to let it sit for a few minutes and finish rendering all the samples. But I'm going to go ahead and close this window. Go back to compositing, click shift A and search up glare. Select it and just drop it between this yellow line. What I want is more of a bloom effect. So we can go to this glare node and change it from streaks to either bloom or I usually use fog glow. I think fog glow looks a bit better than bloom, but obviously the eyes are not glowing. Neither is the emission parts, but you can see the cosmetic where the light is hitting it. It is glowing. So we can change this by going back to layout, clicking N on our keyboard to open up the add-on and changing the emission strength to something like two. So instead of re-rendering this to see if the eyes are glowing, we're going to go to render mode. I'm going to click this drop down arrow and we're going to change compositor to camera. So I'm going to keep it at two. It goes all the way up to five, but you rarely ever need that much. I'm going to change this back to solid mode and click F12 to re-render. After it renders, it might take a second to apply the compositing, but I think this looks pretty good. So if you're fine with this, you can go ahead and click image, click save as, go to wherever you want to save this. You can change the name to whatever you want and click save as image. But that is really it on how to use the add-on. If you have any more questions, there is a help channel in the Discord. Just send a message in here and somebody will answer you eventually. Also, go ahead and send the render you made in the renders channel. But yeah, that is how you use the add-on to make something like a profile picture.